All right. Let's talk about hats. This is the hat. We're pretty much talking about these fedoras. Um, I'm Kevin from JJ Hat Center, and uh, we generally talk about the snap rim fedora on the show, which is a very popular hat at our shop, JJ Hat Center. And uh, today we're going to talk about the different types of fedoras that are out there. Uh, it's just a, a simple crema. Basically, you've got short brims, medium brims, and large brims. Um, you've got center crease, and you've got the teardrop, which is a little bit more of a nostalgic shape. The teardrop looks something like this. eases back and has something like a, a teardrop shape from that bird's eye view, like that. Um, this is not a teardrop, so it's not a very, very soft hat. But this hat is a uh, center crease, and it can always be changed up to teardrop. Those are the two basic shapes for a fedora. Center crease is self-explanatory. It's a crease. It also has two pinches on the side. The crease lowers the hat. So when they start off, they're just open like this, like a big open round shape. The crease will lower it, and the pinches will narrow the sides. Now, how do you know which brim to get? Uh, simple, you try them. You try them brim down, you try them brim up. You look at your face, try a bigger one, you try a smaller one, and repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. You keep trying, and you will know. You'll feel it. The hat salesman can give you his opinion, you can ask, but he's gonna go more by what you feel, and if he sees you're happy in the big brim, he'll say big brim, because when you look good in something, it's usually because you like it, and you're standing tall, and you're wearing that thing. You're, you're owning it. If you don't like it, you sit there kind of cowering, like, does this look good, you know, and it's just like, you know, you're, you're scared of it. You're not wearing it. It's wearing you. So, you know, wear it. Give it a nice angle. Get it right, you know, the way you like it. So you get the look that you want and see if it's good for you. Ask them for a bigger brim. Ask them for a shorter brim. Um, the answer becomes obvious. It becomes apparent to you because each hat wearer has a brim that they like and they gravitate towards it. For me, it's two and a half to three. This is two and a half. I like my hats a little more oversized than this. This is like an old, old hat of mine. And so I had shorter hair back then, so it fits a little tight. It's one of the reasons why I never wear it. Um, but that's another thing. Fit is going to affect the look. Uh, a bigger, more oversized fit might look more relaxed, modern, young. A tighter hat might look dressier, more conservative, you know, like basically if it's just missing the ear, like here's your ear. You want your hat to be close to the ear. You can't see it with all my hair. You want it to be close, you know? I'm not bashing into it and obstructing it, but very close, as close as you can get. And then you go by feel. You want the hat to be as tight as it can be without it bothering you, and you don't want the red line when you take it off. You see a big red line. That's generally a sign it's a little too tight. Um, you can adjust these things. They're completely 100% adjustable to get the size that you want to the millimeter. What you do is you just go big. You go slightly big. You pick up the leather sweatband on the inside. You tighten it. Um, basically, you pick up the band. You put something like weather stripping, which is like foam with uh, adhesive, like a sticker, foam stickers. You put those strips under the band on the inside, and that's it. Um, that will allow you to tighten up a hat that's too big. So this hat is like, I don't know, seven and three eighths. If it's like a quarter, that's my actual size, I generally go up to like a three-eighths or a half, even five-eighths, because I like an oversized, deep look. I don't like it have to be tight, and what I do is I just go a half size too big, and I pad it down. This is what you gotta do. Listen to Kevin. Pad your hats down, go big. Once you have a hat that's too small, you'll never do it again. <laughs>
echo pedal that I use. like making weird sounds. Okay, go big, tighten it up, um, that's the way you buy a hat. Now, brim size is something that's very subjective. You have to look at your face, how the whole thing compares. Look at the whole picture, the whole image. What does this guy look like in this hat? Does it just look like this jerk in a fedora? Does it look cool, edgy, fashionable? I mean, uh, conservative. What's the look? If it's not the look, what's wrong? Is it the crown? Is it the height? Is it how tight it is? Is it the color? Is it too dark? Is it too light? Is the crown too skinny? It's off-centered. Let's get it centered. Maybe you want a brim down look. Maybe you want a brim down to the side look. Maybe you want a brim up look to the side. Maybe you want it all the way down in the back too. These are all different looks. Once you get your look down, you need to be happy with it once you nail it. Um, it's like, like guitars, if you don't have your, your perfect guitar, you don't feel comfortable. So once you get your gear right and you don't have to think about your gear, it clicks because you could be creative. You don't have to think about, oh, I can't play this guitar, the neck is too thick. You just create, you just play because the guitar is no longer an obstruction, it's just there. Uh, it's almost like it's not there. Um, so, you ever see this? You gotta do that again. Sounds like a klaxon, right? This was a gift from a friend. A friend gave me this. This is a, a Zappa. Roxy Zappa uh, edition signature. Gibson Les Paul, Gibson well, SG model. Very rare, there were not a lot of these made. I mean, it's like a few hundred. This is serial number 666, actually, it's kind of weird. I think the store owner says it was hard to sell because of the 666 at the end of the serial. But uh, I don't believe in such things. It's just the 666th one that came out of a thousand guitars. I think 500 went overseas, 500 to America. I also have a custom Kevin. Pretty cool headstock, right? Anyway, my friend Frank gave me this. Frank's in this like really big rock band and stuff. He's just awesome. He's super generous. He's one of those like rock star guys who actually like is really cool to his fans and he gives them like lots of cool free like guitars and always stays and gives autographs and stuff. Anyway, he's an old old friend of mine and one day he just showed up at my door with this thing. I hadn't seen the guy in 30 years. He shows up with this like multi-thousand dollar guitar as a gift. <sighs> I must be a good dude or something. I have such great friends. So I asked him to sign the control plate there. Also, when somebody signs it for you, you know you'll never sell that guitar. It's like, it's yours forever. That was a gift. The Dean back there was a gift. And this was a gift from this amazing dude. I also hadn't seen in 30 years since high school. It was like my best friend through like junior high and high school. This amazing guy, Scott, he gave me a Hendrixy Strat. This guy just like specked out all the pickup heights and angles that everything was done from pictures, photos of Hendrix and uh, Clapton. Got all those specifications right, adjusted the guitar, got the right pickups from the custom shop. And this is a fourth guitar given to me as a gift from a viewer from Scott. Scott Raymond, amazing guitar. I've been playing this with a lot of delay. Love that. Anyway, getting back to buying your guitar, not buying guitar, buying your hat. All right, the brim size is important. We just say that, yes. It's really important to get the right brim with the right face. Now, there is not one right brim for you. The brims give you different images. So a two and a half inch brim gives me like this certain casual image that I like. Um, the three inch is a little different. 
I feel the three inch is a little more sort of rock and roll and edgy. Two and a half is, I don't know, it's cool for work, looks accessible. It also looks dressy if I do this. Um, if I tie my hair back and something, I can get like a super casual look, you know. But yeah, brim size is super important. I feel crown is not as important because I can always steam a crown down if I want to change the shape, the height. Um, that's not an option for everybody out there, but it is an option. If you can't get it done at the shop where you are at now, you can bring it to a different shop. You could try it yourself, but crowns can always be moved, changed. Um, if it's a fur felt hat, um, definitely. If it's a wool felt hat, uh, all the felts I use here on this show are fur felts, and they're good soft fur felts, good quality. So they, they are infinitely moldable and steamable, where a wool felt hat technically is not really shapeable with the steaming process, um, but it is. It's kind of like what you gotta do is stiffen it. You spray it with like two, three coats of stiffener, let it dry until like a hard shell. And then what you're doing is you're steaming that hard shell, you soften it with the steam, manipulate the hat to what you want, let go, I mean hold it, and then it cools again and hardens in a new place. So what it is is that spray, the stiffener, is controlling the wool felt and holding it in that new shape. So you can shape wool felt with lots of spray stiffener to help control it, but without it, you do nothing. You just, you know, like there's this shop, begins with a G or something, Brothers, the Goober Brothers or something. A lot of people complain, complain that they take your hat and they wave it over the steamer, I'm gonna steam. You know? It doesn't do anything um, without the stiffening and the know-how. It just doesn't, you know, you can't fix a brim or straighten something if it's a wool felt. And they only deal with wool felt there. Everything has, like, uh, fur felt prices, but wool felt inside, you know. Not only wool felt, they're, like, wool felt from China. They source the materials from China, and they put it together in the States, and they get away with, like, imported materials made in USA and it's just a bunch of Chinese like cheap cheap Chazarai. Anybody knows what Chazarai is out there? Um, it's a real shmata. So uh, if you're buying a shmata and a Chazarai that's one thing but if you're buying decent wool felt, like good wool felt, um, American made wool felt that's got a little snap in it or light felt or something decent you can spray it coat, a two coat, three coat, whatever, get it nice and stiff, then you steam it. So you can control wool felt, the crown, lower it a little bit, you know, you could lower it, tighten the pinch, do certain things, fix a brim. You can't completely reshape a hat if it's cheap, cheap wool felt, turning it like, you know, to a gambler or this and that, a pork pie. I've done it. It's it's not easy. It's going against the grain and it's like nearly impossible, but you can do it. It's just kind of like a makeshift thing and you never know how good it'll come out. But uh, as long as you're buying wool felt, it's iffy how much you can shape it. If you go to buy fur felt and you look inside, it says genuine fur felt someplace. It usually will. Genuine rabbit fur, genuine beaver, genuine fur felt, beaver mink. Anything like that, 100% fur felt. If it says that in there, or fur felt, 6X, 4X for a Western, that is shapeable. And we could do anything you want with the crown, pork pie, teardrop, high, low. Um, not so much wool, with wool felt. Now, crowns, crowns are important, though. Um, not everybody out there can lower their crowns and should count on it. So... If you're a shorter guy or just hate high crowns, you know, look for lower crowns and stuff. And um, you don't always need steam to lower it. You can just kind of manipulate it, you know. Just like a work in progress, like an old baseball glove, you know. You just give it a pinch every day and eventually it does what you want. You sort of train it, you know what I'm saying? You can lower stuff. Um, you just do it carefully and do it right, symmetrically, you know. Don't always need steam. Yeah, lowered my crown. Personally, I think a higher crown has a little bit more pizzazz. That's kind of a connoisseur's thing. Most people start out 
with low crowns, and then as they get bolder and bolder, and they're like, oh, I like you know, all this, and I like that, I want a derby, I want a cap, and they get more into hats, then they do the high crowns, because they want to be more authentic, like, you know, 40s-ish, and they start getting, like, your tastes expand. So it's kind of like, I don't know if it's a cork sniffer kind of thing, or a purist, you know, a vintage purist thing, but uh, it's also an elegant thing. You're like, you know, the high crowns look elegant, uh, Italian and dressy. The low crowns look a little bit more, I don't know, sort of working class America, 1940s black and white movie, you know, any man in the USA, you know, it's kind of like, not that elegant, but it's like a dress hat, you know. Hey, hey, Mac, you know, what's a scoop on a, on a fight, you know? But uh, once you raise the crown up, to me, it has more, more class, elegance. Um, even if you're doing like a sleazy rock and roll thing, like a Keith Richards, you know, or Brian Jones wearing a cool hat, or Bob Dylan or Hendrix look, the high crowns, they all had high crowns. Bob Dylan, Hendrix. <clears throat> they were rock and rollers. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan had a very low crown. I don't think he was a tall guy though. Um, but he had that kind of Zorro uh, bandit, like you know, Mexican sombrero, bad, bad boy, badass kind of look. So I think that low crown for him worked. It was very, you know, I don't know. It looked cool. So high crown, low crown, mess around with it. Brim size. It's going to be more important color. Uh, a lot of guys walk in, they say they want a black hat. They just think, you know, you know a black coat, you know, a black hat, black. Um, a lot of times, black is not good when you've got like, you know, pale skin, gray hair, light eyes. The black is in very harsh. It just looks, I don't know, creepy sometimes. So go with gray. Do gray with the black band. It brightens the look up. It looks less serious, less funeral like or rabbi-like, and uh, it might be more fun, you know, you could wear it with blue, with a trench coat, with jeans, you know, and all kinds of stuff. Go with a gray instead of black. Um, try black, then try gray, and see what you really want. You know, if the old man wants black, don't talk him out of it, because Kevin says, get gray, it'll brighten you up. Get what the old man wants. If the old man wants black and it makes him happy, you know, each hat wearer likes different things. Every man is attracted to different brims and crowns and colors. So if the old man is buying a tiny brim and it's black and he looks like a you know an 80 year old man wearing it, that's what he likes. You know, let him get it. Um, there are younger hats out there, the more conservative hats. You have to try them. You have to see what you like. It's all up to the wearer. Don't worry about what your wife says, what your uh, whatever you what Kevin says, the salesman says. Get what you're gonna wear, don't get what's gonna lay in the closet. Because if you're spending like, you know, two bills on a Stetson, that's like two, that's a lot of money. Um, think about that, you know, that's, you could buy so much with it, you know, a nice dinner, a magazine subscription, go out to the movies, 100 bucks, you could buy a guitar, uh, you could buy a guitar and a, a light felt hat. I mean, there's just so much stuff. So, for me, I, I want to buy something I know I'm going to wear. Um, I don't want it to be risky. Um, for me, I know I like colors, you know, like things that are colored, I always wear. Things that are gray and black and taupe, they tend to stay in my house. Uh, there was a time when I worked at JJ's where I wore caps. I mean, all I wore were caps and caps and caps. And it was this one black cap called the Roadster. And you know, I got a couple of free caps and then wore them for like four or five years. But I had to get what we call a season hat. We get two free hats a year working at JJ's. It's part of the perks of working full time. So I would buy these four Salinos that look like this, you know, in taupe and gray and black, thinking that this is a easy hat for me to wear in the future in case I just want to give it as a gift to somebody or if I want to wear it, I'll like it. And it turned out the colorful, the more colorful green hats and royal blue, those are the ones I wear a lot. And the ones that are like taupe like this and black and gray, they wound up staying in my closet or getting given away to my you know, father-in-law and stuff like that. So think about what you really like and what you're gonna like in five years, 10 years. Don't get anything risky that's gonna collect dust. Get something that you're gonna wear. And uh, don't be pressured into the wrong thing. Get what you love. Um, Brim size is probably the most important thing. 
and you could find that you look good in a gray hat, but whether you get a one and three quarter inch, a two inch, a two and a quarter, a two and three eighths, or a two and a half inch brim, it's gonna make a big difference. Um, so try them, you know, bug your salesman, bug the heck out of them, just be like, can I try a bigger brim? I'm really sorry, can I try a smaller brim? You know, and tell him, say I'm not shopping today, I'm, gonna, I'm just window shopping. Because he doesn't want to be like, you know, giving you hours of hats and then you walk out. So if you are buying, tell him, say I'm buying today. You know, I'm definitely going to buy something. And then try on 10 hats or 20 hats, whatever you want, you know. It's your right. It's your right to do it and to come back two times or three times. Um, I'm all for that. I think you should make your purchase count, especially if you're buying something expensive that might last you 20, 30 years, a lifetime. Uh, people get their dad's hats, their grandpa's hats. Hats outlive you. Um, these guitars might outlive me. My son's grandparent, grandson might have it. Who knows? You know, my descendants might have that Les Paul. So, you know, make your choice count if you're spending a lot of money on a hat and get something that you will wear. Don't get that weird experimental job that your wife said, oh, you look so young in that blue hat. You know? Get what you want, man, you know? A hat is a personal thing. It's a, it's a guy thing. It's a, it's a gal thing, too. You know, it's, a, it's a me thing, you know? And um, everybody has to bond with a particular instrument. Um, and you have to bond with a particular piece of clothing, too, or, or headwear. So that's about it. Um, it's time to go to work. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. It's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Um, if you guys can, below there's a subscribe button over there, that red little, see that red one down there? It says subscribe. If you tap that, um, every time I get a new video up, it'll be in your, the top of your YouTube feed. You'll just see it at the beginning of the day. You won't get like text messages or any kind of spam. Or, but if you want to know when I'm, I've got new videos, press subscribe and you'll know. And if you want to get like a little text or an email, you can press the bell icon too, and you get that too, but uh, I never do that. So anyway, yeah, subscribe, um, ask me questions, make uh, suggestions for new subjects, new show titles. I can use them. And um, keep wearing your hats, enjoy. You look fantastic in your hat. And um, let's put the old theme song. I think I'm really out of tune, but we're gonna do it anyway. Should I drop the pick just for tradition's sake?